Guys, guys, the bridge went live yesterday in regards to Pulse Chain, and we're seeing some crazy things happen in regards to the bridge itself. Now, a lot of people are currently underwater, guys, since the sacrifice phase. I don't understand why that's the case because maybe there's not enough liquidity coming into Pulse Chain at this moment. We can see that at the at at this moment that rap pulse chain has about 19 million in liquidity pulse x has about 18 million liquidity but what you want to pay attention is currently to the price itself guys now the whole point of you sacrificing was that you would maybe ho in hopes that you'll get two three x your money but since the bridge actually went live that's not the case guys a lot of people that actually sacrifice are underwater they're underwater 70 to 80 percent of their actual investment now you ask yourself okay why did i sacrifice is this actually fair distribution is this uh, applying first principles and in, in, in regards to the whole ecosystem well i can tell you that this is not the case guys personally myself i sacrificed two years ago and i'm very sad to see that this is the case not because I'm losing money in regards to the sacrifice phase, but because we keep applying the same things that aren't working for the average investor that's coming into this, guys. We need to basically move away from these sacrifice phase where the founder actually holds 80 to 90 percent of the allocation where he can actually dump on the community. Now, Richard, Richard has spoken very highly in regards to this aspect where he says, look, would you rather be uh in in the crypto asset where the founder holds more than 80 90 percent or would you rather be in a place where he holds a very small amount well depending on how this actually gets launched now this is building the greatest case scenario okay this is the greatest campaign scenario for zen overall guys because if you look at this guys if you look at this there's nothing about this is actually fair distribution applying first principles overall we continue to see that look these hedge funds and uh, these other investment uh, firms are coming into crypto they have 20 to 30 percent of the allocation so we see them again the developers have about 20 percent of the allocation we see these big institutional funds have 20 percent of the allocation and then 50 to 60 percent of that or or 10 percent is actually gone to marketing so only 50 percent are actually making their way to the community now when you say that is that really fair distribution it's not really fair distribution guys we have to start moving away from from this because Look, a lot of people right now at this point, right, at this point, because if the liquidity comes into Pulse Chain, we don't know if these prices are actually going to go up because you got so many copies of ERC-20s on Pulse Chain, right? You got so many copies of, of all that happening, just moving around. And you ask yourself, okay, are they going to share the same liquidity? That's impossible because you need to get the same amount of number of market cap that's in Ethereum to basically drive this market uh, up as a whole right i don't think that they can reach parity but again i could be wrong guys i could be totally wrong again always apply risk management you know we, we always talk about look apply risk management understand that you, capital management is the most important thing in order to sustain yourself in this market guys and looking at these numbers at these prices uh this is horrible guys you know a lot of investors are down 80 90 percent this is not fair distribution guys we go back and we look at the Pulse Chain Bridge, okay, and when we try to bridge our assets, you know, some of them you have to actually go in and claim them. So the user experience overall hasn't been too great. The gas fees are very high overall. So what did really Richard provide here? You know, you sacrificed millions and millions of dollars, almost billion, okay, and then you have this, you know, less than average chain guys it really is less than average chain because it's really not solving any problems at the end of the day look i'm, I'm gonna be a first critique at, at, at any blockchain guys you have to be a first critique and overall you can't be a maxi can't be a maxi in all things guys you have to speak your mind you have to say it how it is if pulse chain does not work it does not work and it failed guys if zen does not work it does not work guys and that is that is the true thing that crypto was meant for, is that we improve our livelihoods. We improve ourselves so that we move away from the current system into a better one. If we don't criticize each other and try to improve uh, upon, uh, you know, our technical abilities, then what are we truly doing here? You know, we're just spending money at the same exact thing and not getting anywhere, guys. And, you know, 
this is what I, I made a tweet here saying I don't understand why PLS community are so sour when you speak from user experience that pulse chain has been horrible the bridge is not even out yet and hand, uh, so I say handle the criticism and improve period so we're saying here look I was having trouble in regards to you know trying to get transactions to go through once pulse chain launched and I wasn't able to I had a lot of failed transaction I had a lot of pending transaction uh, it may be because it is the amount of usage that's happening on the network but look if you're gonna be spending millions and millions of dollars trying to develop this or if you even have tried then you know maybe maybe try to improve on the transaction load right and and we're, we haven't seen that however look we're gonna give this some time we're gonna give credit where credit is due at the end of the day guys and we have to just wait to see how much liquidity comes into into this and let's see if you know people are going to be up two three x i don't think so because a lot of people again uh are, are trying they're gonna try to move around uh at a loss and uh i see that already on twitter guys so it's, it's just a astronomically crazy what's happening and this is again uh going back into what's happening with zen guys okay with with actually zen okay it's first principle fair distribution where not all of the you know coins go to the founder the founder himself is part of the community guys he has to go in once the contract is live he has to go in and start minting his own coins guys that is fair distribution in my books guys and that's why you know with jack leaven and what he's doing with x1 and trying to connect back to bitcoin overall you go back and you look at it you say to yourself okay what's happening in the developments in regards to brc20 now, BRC20, again, came up in regards to the Taproot upgrade that Bitcoin had. A lot of people in the community, or a few people actually in the community, the developer aspect of it, are not happy with Taproot as a whole. The reason being is that because it's bringing uh, scalability issues to Bitcoin, making it unusable overall with high uh, minor fees. Now, that's not to say that's not a bad, you know, a good thing. It is a good thing because people want to transact. They want to do these things. And the cool thing that BRC20 brought overall, Taproot brought to Bitcoin is that it brought the ability to inscribe onto a single Satoshi, guys. And this is a lot different than the actual smart contracts because smart contracts are basically... Uh, you know a layer uh, a smart ability to basically write on top of another layer now with BRC 20s you don't need that smart contract capability you can basically inscribe onto a single Satoshi making your your basic stamp there now again we've seen a, a lot of this market being driven by meme coins and we've been discussing this over the past few weeks saying look a lot is gonna merge out of this market a lot is gonna merge out of the BRC 20 uh, community because it always does development always leads to the next thing and what is the next thing we already seen this right with ethereum with uh, dex you know DAOs, and and all these things and we're going to continue to basically have development happening on brc20 now the cool thing is that look it's already you know we're looking at this market right here let's refresh it it's half a billion dollars guys and what's going to be happening is that look stacks is the layer chain building on top of Bitcoin and it's basically making Bitcoin more scalable and that you can actually start building like things like DEXs on top of Bitcoin so that you can actually bring in a whole new market so you don't actually have to do peer-to-peer -peer. I understand peer-to-peer -peer is the way to go and in, in the fundamentals of what Bitcoin has has in the white paper however uh, if you are able to provide liquidity and you're all able to do a lot of these things and bring in a whole new market why wouldn't you want to be able to do that guys and and that's what alex is doing alex is going to be launching tomorrow guys so this is the dex that's basically on stacks and stacks is the layer on bitcoin guys so they're going to be launching tomorrow and if you haven't participated into this maybe they will be having an airdrop so you always want to be a first mover just for that reason is that you have the eligibility to be basically having an airdrop so we've seen in crypto guys that airdrops have been big overall so that's why you might want to participate into this again in order to get uh, and, and participate into alex so you're gonna have to get the tx uh, tx right here and then you can basically start uh, 
you know, interacting with these BRC20s here. And it makes it more easier overall. And, and we're going to see this market cap eventually grow into billions and billions of dollars. We're going to see a lot of things grow out of it. Yield generating protocols. We're going to see, you know, full, uh, pools, farming, a lot of cool things. Look, we already had in Ethereum. This space is going to go a lot faster, a lot quicker because we already have the foundation, the principles that we need in order to build a lot quicker, guys. This is way more fair than actually the founder having 80 90 percent because if you can go in and you start minting your own and paying the cost the transaction cost to basically onboard yourself why wouldn't you want to do that do you want to sacrifice guys do you want to sacrifice and be underwater knowing that the liquidity might not come in or just pay a small uh, gas fee or minor fee to basically onboard yourself onto uh, these platforms onto the brc 20s or onto zen knowing that your your cost of entry barrier is very low overall than actually investing in something that may not you know come to parity or may not even go up at the end of the day guys so it's important to understand that there's strategies that you have to apply especially when getting into zen because look if it's costing me let's say one dollar to mint overall guys one of these brc 20s and um you know, it. I get about four thousand dollars of that. Uh, four thousand of these, uh, maybe ordinal. Let's say VMPX. I get four thousand by just spending two dollars. Then, you know, my cost of barrier entry or investment is very low, right? And if it goes up, maybe you know double. I just maybe doubled my money, two x my money, guys. So, the entry fee for you to onboard yourself is a lot cheaper. Uh, it's applying first principle where the founder doesn't have. A huge amount of the allocation he's just like the community where he's just coming in and starting to mint so why wouldn't you want to be for first principles right guys so that's that's very important overall that this is all coming back into what bitcoin was meant for so we're going to see a lot of development happening here guys there's also another development again we are trying to move from smart contracts but we're seeing i think it was i see I see um, hmm, it was I see Bitcoin uh, that basically is bringing in smart contracts as well, too, which is another emerging market that we're going to be discussing here. I don't want to go too much into detail with it, but if you want, subscribe to this channel so that you can keep up to date what's happening with Bitcoin, Ethereum overall, even Pulse Chain and Zen, guys. So give this video a like if you enjoy content like this, guys. Let's just quickly move on to some of the news that we're seeing overall. European Union passes a law, guys. Now, this bill has been going around for some time from February to April, and it finally got approved overall that, look, they're requiring identification for all crypto transactions. So how are they actually going to go through all in regards to this? Now, they can, again, KYC the whole exchanges overall. Uh, I don't know how they can KYC your uh, actual MetaMask. They might may move MetaMask away from the Play Store, you know, self-custody wallets away. But I don't see how they can actually apply this bill where you're going to have to need an identification or order to basically transact in crypto. Because at the end of the day, guys, if you're not interacting with an exchange, how are you going to know who's, whose address is who unless you, you know that person specifically and you've been... Uh, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transacting with them in some sort of way, guys. So unless your address is not known in the exchange world, then I think they can't really push this overall. But a lot of, again, developments in the regulation space are happening. And this is going to put a lot of pressure in regards to the United States. Because if this, again, bill already passed into law, then you're going to see the United States try to shift a lot quicker in regards to regulation and what's happening there. So some crazy, crazy things are happening in regards to the regulation. The regulation is not going away because, again, we talked about this, guys. The narrative has been that if you want to be in the long-term holders, find coins just like BAX and BAB that are creating the regulatory framework in order for, you know, uh, for you to be safe overall for your long-term investments, guys. Uh, we're seeing here same thing US government to crack down on crypto exchanges again could this basically mean more again more of that uh, stable coin uh, FUD is could that be be more KYC processes uh, because Uncle Sam guys Uncle Sam wants to get his cut in regards to his taxes taxes is the whole big thing 
okay if, if the the governments are not generating taxes from this and a lot of funds are moving away from the united states dollar then this takes the united states dollar in a back seat guys it puts it in a back seat where it's gonna have a lot of trouble you know keeping up with crypto and it's a, as its power as the world reserve currency so it's very important guys if you like this content guys consider subscribing if you're brand new here again show some so show some love guys give this video a like until next time bros as always stay profitable